Hi, I'm Mark Crossley, and you are listening to the Prawn Sandwich Podcast. How's the bacon, did you say? That's it, Oh, what a fantastic hit! Roy Keane on Holland. Here's Sancho. Aguero! Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to the Prawn Sandwich Podcast. We are back again with another X Pro. We're flying. Flying. Wheel started gone and we got it on. I'm joined by Nathan Cupid and Jamie Jackson. Hello. Ciao. And uh, so this one uh, interview with Skip Boyd, who's a local, more of a local footballer from around Carlisle where we live. But uh, personally, lads, thought he was brilliant, down to earth. Answered every question, even followed questions on. Don't know what you you two thought of it. Oh, great lad, really love him. The chat, yeah, yeah, really good. Um, now thanks very much, Mark, for coming on. Um, you know you said to send him the link when it comes out for because he wants to wants to have a listen and that. So nah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So just dive straight in, lads. There, yeah. Why not? Just, yeah. just 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 before just before you fire on the interview, it's worth saying he played for. Port Vale, Barrow, uh, was a youth at Newcastle, spells at Carlisle, Gretna. But he goes through it all, so enjoy it, listeners. It's a really good insight to what right, it's like quality. at that level. So, so here he is for years, Mark Skip Boyd. Thanks very much for coming on, pal. No problem. So late at night as well. <laughs> no, it's all right, mate. It's all right. But uh, you keeping yourself busy? I have, mate. I've had a busy day, to be honest. I've had a um, long day at work and Obviously, we've I've started. Uh, do you know Chris Lumsden? He's played for Carlisle United. Yeah. Um, he started Lumsden elite coaching, one to one coaching. So obviously, I've I've teamed up with him. Um, so that takes up most of our nights now, and and uh, we're coaching some really talented kids between the age of like six and, and 14, 15. So it's all good. It's all okay. go. Quality stuff is that local? Then I take it, yeah. Yeah, that's local, mate. We're based in um, we're based in Warwick Bridge. Um, we don't just coach kids. Um, we sort of do. We go into schools and we do like the the mental health side of it, things like anxiety in in, in, in kids. I mean, especially over the pandemic, with when they've been away from the friends so long and, and they've got to go back into school. And and we just try and, and, and give them a little bit of advice. And we sort of we sort of tie it in with um, with our careers. So it's sort of going it's going all right. That sounds good stuff, man. Um... You've been one of the fortunate people who's been able to actually go to games, haven't you, over the past uh, over the past season? How, how have you been finding doing that stuff, the commentary um, for Barrow? To be honest with you, mate, I mean, I know I'm, I'm very privileged to go, um, but, my God, it's so different. It's so different. I mean, I, I think because fans have never been out of the ground, they're took for granted. Um, but when they're not there, it's... I mean, when I was a footballer and, and you, you weren't in the first team and... Sometimes I'd like they used to call them bounce games where they used to play them midweek behind closed doors. They've got like a feel of that to them um, for the lads who weren't playing just to keep like match, match fitness up and, and things like that. Um, but just to, I mean just to see them in the last couple of days has been has been fantastic. But yeah, I mean it's as I say we've been lucky, but it's been very very different. And, and I'm just looking forward to to doing it again next season and and, um, and the grounds being uh, being full. I bet, especially with Barrow staying up as well. Yeah, it was. It was. It was touch and go at one point, you know. Um, and after so many years, and, and the fans not getting in, you're thinking, "Oh, it's going to be a disaster." Um, and it all came down to management appointment. I think. Um, I think David Dunn was the first one. He was a bit unlucky. He lost by the odd goal too many times, but I think if he had a bit more luck, he could have been a success. Um, so they got rid of him, and they brought a guy in called Michael Jolly. Now I don't know much about him. Um, I think he's around my age, so he's young for a manager. Um, and he had 60 days, which was, I mean, I've got to be honest, it was a bit of a disaster. But you've got to give massive credit to the board um, for seeing it was a disaster because he'd been in such a short period of the time. You might have thought, do you know what? We'll give him a bit more time. Um, but they never, they cut the losses, they realised they made a mistake, put an experienced guy in Rob Kelly and he turned it around and, 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 and thank the Lord they're a, they're a League Two team next season. So that's, that's all good. That's spot on. Uh, Nathan's dad's a big Barrow fan, isn't he, Nath? Yeah, oh. he is, yeah. <laughs> is he? Yeah, he's from there. Uh, he once called you the non-league Paul Gascoigne when we went and watched you play once. Was that after a good summer? I bet it was. Yeah. You were pretty good that day, to be fair, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Very kind of him, very kind. No, I'll tell you what, I absolutely... 
I mean, that was my most favourite time playing football. It was. I had about five years at Barrow and then and we just got really lucky. I mean, we had two FA Cup third rounds against Premier League teams and when you walk out and there's thirty odd thousand there and you're thinking, Wow, this is this is this is the real thing, this. Um I mean, you don't get many touches of the ball, don't get us wrong. Um, <laughs> too, too busy chasing shadows, but the experience is phenomenal. And then obviously we got to Wembley, we were massive underdogs and, and we won that as well. So, I mean, I've got a good, real good affiliation with the with the Barrow fans and, and with the club and uh, there's still a lot of directors there from when I was there. So it's I feel, I mean, that, that's the club that I've, I'm most fond of. Spot on. Well, we'll move on to your football career then, pal. And uh, yeah. if we start right at the start, um, yeah. So you were in Carvals you set up in the nineties. That's right. It was a bit, yeah. of a, a bit of a golden era there for local boys coming through at the time. Yeah. It was, you'd have maybe just been a couple of years younger, younger than the likes of uh, Matt Janssen, Rory Dillap, etc. Um, yeah. Who, who was in your age group around that time? My age group was Paul Reed, um, who obviously got sold to Rangers. Had a really good career at Barnsley, Northampton, um, to name a few. Um, Obviously, there was myself that was was lucky enough to to make a footballer. Um, my age as well. I don't think there's there's that many from my my actual age group, but just the ones a couple of years before and a couple of years above. Um, there was Gav Skelton, obviously a year above me. He's now the assistant manager down at down at Carlisle. But the golden era, the era was like four or five years above me. Um, yeah. With the likes of Matt Janssen, um, Tony Hopper, God rest his soul. Um, yeah. Um, Rory, obviously, Will Varty, the list, Paul Murray, um, Richard Procas, and this is endless. Honestly, they was <laughs> they were a real, real. It was like a bit like the low league um, class of ninety two, if you like. Um, that's how that's how many players they got through, and they were they're all real good lads and real good players. So must have um, must have been good, like being younger and seeing these players given a chance. Um, you must have been like encouraging for players of a bit younger than them surely yeah it was I mean I mean I, I went to what happened with me at Carlo was um, I went to Carlo when I was about 8 or 9 and in the under 12s now they don't do that now because obviously they've all got their own age groups from a real young age but back in back in them days it was it sort of started at under 12s which you could argue all day long I mean they have under 6s under 7s and that now and for me if you want my honest opinion I just think it's a little bit too young but listen everyone's got their own opinion about it but I went down at about nine and um, I loved it. It was just one night a week. I loved it. I was um, I was in the same, I sort of trained with like Matt Janssen, them sort of lads. And it was a real, a real eye-opener because I thought, these are really, really good players. I mean, I know I was a bit younger than them, but even then I thought that's what you've sort of got to get to. But my sort of my sort of breakthrough came for me when I was 14. Um, I got asked to go to Newcastle when I was 14. And... Um, I won't lie, I was only, obviously I was only 14, I was a bit nervous, um, but my dad said, look, just go and give it a go, what have you got to lose? Carl, I was desperate for me to stay, um, and I went and played 45 minutes, and I, was, and I can remember it clear this day, I played 45 minutes against Huddersfield, and I, I, I just couldn't do anything wrong, <laughs> just everything went my way, and uh, I got signed that afternoon, and um, I had about seven, seven fantastic years at Newcastle, and and that's where I sort of got my education in football and, and, it, and, it, and it held me in good stead going forward. So who who was in charge at the time when you signed? Um, the first team, would it, in 95, would that have been? Newcastle. Um, I think it was Kevin, yeah, it was Keegan. And then when I went full-time, it was Kenny Daglish. Now, when I left school, I mean, not many people know this, I got very lucky because when you're at school, you got to play for like the city team and then the county team if, you were, if you're lucky enough to be selected. And um, I remember in the last year of school, I was I'd been at Newcastle a couple of years. I was I was maybe just full of confidence. I'd I'd come on as a player and I was playing really really well in, in the county teams. And I got asked to go to the likes of Man United, Liverpool when I left school. But what that got me was that got me like a instead of just a two year YTS, what it used to be, that got me like a, a three year pro basically as soon as I left school. Oh. Yeah, because it was sort of like, well, if you stay with us, we'll give you this, this, and this, and I, I got well looked after. So I got a good start. But yeah, when I went full time, it was it was Kenny Daglish, and obviously uh, Terry McDermott as as his number two. But some of the players, when you think back, that were there, and then obviously the one that stands out is is Alan Shearer. Um, obviously, he was a superstar, wasn't he? His world record fee and all that. 
Then you've got Shea giving in goals, Gary Speed, another one. God rest his soul, he was the ultimate pro. And you can just go, the names go on and on and on. And if you can't learn of them, guys, you can't learn of anyone. Yeah. Did, did you have much experience training in amongst them then? Yeah, um, not to start with, obviously, because I was just just finding finding my feet. Um, but sort of in my third of the of the five full time years I was there, the last sort of two seasons, I was I was sort of with them every day. Um, um, and in my position was the likes of obviously Gary Speed, Kieran Dyer, Rob Lee, um, and you just sort of learn different things off them every day, and yeah. and you could just see why the the they were in the position they were in through how the, they applied themselves and the ability they had and, and things like that. So. For the two years I trained with them, it was fantastic. But I, I never ever got that chance to to play the first team, which is always a big regret. I was yeah. I was sometimes quite close. Um, I mean, I was in the I was I was classed as being a first team squad member. I had to report for games and things like that. But I was always left with my suit on at three o'clock, so I never ever I never ever got on. So, but no, it was it was brilliant. And then um, obviously when I was how old was I when I left there? I think I was twenty one. Um, it was time to move on. I got I got summoned up to the the manager's office like you do end of the season uh, it was Bobby Robson at the time and uh, I mean a lot of people know this but I walked in and he was practising do, do you remember them golf ball machines where they put them in and spits the ball back <laughs> yeah yeah so he stood there with his like his trainer gear on in his socks and he's, he's took about two or three put something can, does he know I'm here or not <laughs> so I like, stood there he went, and then he turned around he went sit down son sit down and he was he was good as goal. I mean, he was great with everyone. I mean, his, his reputation in the world of football is just second to none, isn't it? But it's because of his man management. He was absolutely amazing. He was, honestly. And he got me to Port Vale in League One um, because he knew Brian Hart and the manager. And he says, I'm not just going to release you. I'm going to help you find a club. And he didn't have to do that, I don't yeah. think. But he, 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 um, he, he done it and I don't think he had to do that. No, that's... That's that's really good. Like I've I've noticed on Twitter um, like a few tweets this week where there's uh, former pros that have like kind of opened up and said like the messages are open if there's anybody being released and struggling and stuff like that because a lot of kids just get forgotten about, don't they, and pushed aside. Like that that was top notch by Bob, Bobby Robson to do that. Proper gent. Yeah, he was, mate. He was, and he just you know what? That, that's why he was unique. It didn't matter if you were Alan Sheen or you were me bottom of the ladder top of the ladder he didn't treat anybody any different there's no favouritism you were all treated the same and it made you feel really comfortable in and around the place um, and he was just um, he was just he was amazing mate honestly I, I could tell you some stories about that guy um, on, in the training ground and he used to get like he used to get lads mixed up he used to call Carl Court Shaw Lamiobi and the other way around and, <laughs> and things like that so he was uh, but he was just everybody loved him nobody had a bad word about him he was brilliant Oh, we spoke to Mark Crossley recently and he said the same about Brian Clough. Um, yeah. Brian Clough knew absolutely everybody that worked at the club from top to bottom. Every, every player in the youth team, like, and then tea lady, kit man, I, absolutely everybody. I think, I think it's, a, I think it's honestly, I, I, you can't, you can't underestimate how, how, how good that is because like you say, he was the same. He knew everyone in the club, everybody by first name terms and he had, he wouldn't just go and make a point of talking to the to the top players. He would go and sit with, he'd come and sit with us young lads sometimes and have his have his lunch and mm. it's a bit intimidating for us because he's just come and plonks himself down on our seat on our table, you know. But he'll just go around and he'll talk to us and he and, the, and he knew things about us where you think, how do you know that? But he's that was just his knowledge and that's why he's he's, he's renowned the way he is. He was just a, a really fantastic person. Well, hey. um, so moving on to Port Vale then, mate. Um, yeah. So going in there, you're straight in the first team from the off. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was sort of real. It, it, I mean, going back to Newcastle, the, the last two years, obviously, I trained with the first team. It was always reserve team football for me. I never ever got yeah. out to go out on loan or or things like that, where some of the other lads did. Um, so it was. It was one of them where I did have to go and play a trial game in Port Vale. Bobby Robson sorted it for me. Um, and I went and played on a Tuesday night against Birmingham City. Now, what had happened to Birmingham on the weekend? They'd been trounced 5 0. So Steve Bruce was the manager, and I think he was fuming. So he made the first team play against Port Vale Reserves, but they didn't <laughs> try a leg. They did not want to be there one bit. Well, that was perfect for me because they were just standing, they were just standing about. Yeah. So my trial game, again, went really well. And I got a two year deal. Um, I got took off after 60 minutes and I got a two year deal. And then that was me. I, I had to move to Stoke. Um, I got to know that it's 
it is people say it's like going to school on your first on your first day when you're walking and you're changing room. It's, it's it's awful. Like you don't know who to look at, you don't know who to speak to, you don't know where to sit, and you're like, oh, this is it. But then someone just, how are you doing, mate? Like I'm such and such, and then within a week, you know everybody, and and it's great. And then um, yeah, so I was I was straight in the first team, and my football league debut was an absolute disaster. <laughs> yeah, um, do you remember a player called Jason Kumas? Oh yeah, quality um, player. Well, he was on the verge of getting out of League One. He was just far too good for it. And he played for Tranmere. Well, we had the first game of the season. So it was me against... Like, I was one of the two midfielders and he was one of the two midfielders. Well, the beat was 4-1. I got took off after 55 minutes. And I thought, am I up to this or not? I don't know if I am. But he was just too good for that league. So luckily enough, after that, I held my own. Um, and I had two really good seasons there. And I do regret leaving, to be honest. Um, that's where it started to go a bit wrong for me when I left Port Vale. Um, I had two real good seasons there in League One. Um, playing against some really good clubs and I was playing well at one point I was playing regular and I was playing really well and I thought Do you know what I feel comfortable in this league and I was living right um, and, and things like that and everything was going well and then Brian Horton got the sack and uh, the youth team manager Martin Foyley got promoted to first first team manager and we'd never seen eye to eye since I was there and I thought oh, I can't believe he's got the job and that's, that's, that's how it works in football sometimes if your face doesn't fit you're out the door that's it um, yeah. and we just sort of had a conversation and I had, I had about half a dozen options and I chose to come back to Carla and it was the worst thing I ever done just you must have been pretty like out, out of all your options like choosing Carla were you excited to come back home initially and like go of it and... yeah it was it, it, I was it was sort of what is it heart over head or head over heart so I think you know I'm thinking I can go home we had a chance of getting, we got relegated, but we had a chance of staying up and I wanted to be part of the, the team that, you know, sort of like a great escape and all these sort of things go through your head. And when I met Simo, Paul Simpson, he spoke really well. Um, and he said, look, come in. We've got four and a half months left. Um, I want you to come. I want you to be here next season, whether we go down or we stay up. We talk money, we agreed money. And I thought, right, let's do it. Um, so I came back. We went on the, re- I mean, even though I got relegated for Carlisle, people don't re- re- um, realise my record there, not just obviously me, but our, um, the record, the games I played in was good, but we were just too far adrift. Um, so that was when there were like four points at Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah, it was someone remember yeah. when Roddy, mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. Roddy Collins is in. Yeah, so <laughs> he um, he left the Simo, done a really, really good job. Have you seen what he done the year after the year after that? They came up and up again. A fantastic uh, manager, but he... Um, he sort of he let me down a bit because we went down. I'd done well for him. We had a, we had a, and the budget got cut. And he just he just offered me money I couldn't accept. Um, I tried always to sort of get a little bit more to say, say do you know what? I'll, I'll if you can give me this. And he says I can't give you any more. And he sort of went back on his word, which look I know this. I know it happened in football. I've seen it loads of times, but it was sort of a gentleman's agreement where I didn't think he'd be the type of guy to let me down. But I think his hands were tied with with the people above him. So. My time at Carlisle was short. It was only four and a half months, and that's another that's another regret. But in in hindsight, I, sh- I shouldn't have come back. And then the next two years, I was just in the wilderness. I really was. I, I was I was I was bewildered. I didn't know what was going on. I went from I went from League One football to 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 getting relegated out the football league. And I went to Gretna. They had all this money. They give me a three year deal on nearly a thousand pound a week. For playing half a game, for playing half a game of football against a team called Dalbeaty Star. <laughs> Bloody hell! I mean, it just doesn't now. It just doesn't make any sense. Like at the time, I got pulled off at half time. He went, "Do you want to sign three years?" I was like, "What?" He was like, "We'll give you this much money," and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it." Like, yeah. So it was one of them. It was just, it was just a mental club though, because it was just ran by. It was run by amateurs and it was it was a massive divide. I mean, I know they won the league and they went up, up and up, but listen, it's 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 no it's no secret. Me and the manager didn't see eye to eye from day one. Um, Rowan Alexander is I won't I won't, I won't, I won't I'm not gonna sit here and I'm above that, but I, I, my thoughts on him, I, I don't think I could say on here. Um, and, and that's that. Um, and yeah. I, I you probably say the same about me, and that's fine. But I was playing with a bunch of lads where I knew I should be in the team. And it was so frustrating for two years. <laughs> and then and then I went in to see them. I said, look, I'm not getting anywhere here. 
I need to get away before my career is over, before it sort of started. And uh, Brooks Marston, another one, God rest his soul as well. He just had a checkbook in his pocket, mate. And he, he was just, he would write any amount of checks, but he would just give lads thousands of pounds to rip the contracts up. And I was one of them. Yeah. I mean, what the money I got to leave there was, it was phenomenal. <laughs> that, that, it was just a club. It's just like a bottomless, bottomless pit. What are you like? What goes on here? I mean, they don't get any fans, or it was just, it was berserk. But when once they got away from there, things sort of started looking up again. So it was just from, from when I left Carlisle, I had just two rotten years in Scotland, watching Scottish third division football, Scottish second division football every Saturday, not being involved, and I wasn't living right because I wasn't, I wasn't playing football, and I was going out too much, and yeah, it was just a, it was a bad time. Man. No, that must must be really frustrating. That like, um, did you have like good folk around you helping helping you around it? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, my stuff. Yeah, my. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't with my wife who I'm with now, um, but my mum and dad. I mean, I lost a brother at sixteen, uh, tragically, and I was only eleven, ten or eleven. So, um, it sort of brought us unbelievably. I mean, we were close anyway, but yeah. It brought us like, much more closer. I mean, my dad used to finish work and I used to take took it for granted when I was 14. He used to come home on a Tuesday, on a Thursday, literally walk in the door, grab something to eat. We were in the car within five or ten minutes. We were over to Newcastle. I was training Tuesday, Thursday nights. That was constant for two years. And he'd take me all over the country on a Sunday. And I mean, I'm, I'll be forever in his debt for that. But wherever I've been, wherever I've been, I'm hitting the heights of getting a three year contract at Newcastle or not featuring them in the Scottish Third Division for Gretna. They've always been behind me 100%. So I was very, very lucky that way. I've got a great close knit of friends um, and I've got a really good family. So it does help at the time because, like you see now on, on the likes of social media and things like that, there is people there. I mean, there's even strangers for people now who say, Look, we, we probably don't know each other. But if you want to chat and things, we can, we can talk, you know, but we didn't have that then. Um, yeah. But I've always had um, close knit friends and, and my family. So I got through it. I got through it. Don't worry about that. I was never on my own. And, and uh, I was always able to speak to people, so I was I was I was all right that way. That's oh, spot on. Well, after uh, after your spell at Gretna, and there was obviously a couple of sm- like small stints at Macclesfield and Accrington. Um, yeah, Southport. Southport, yeah. Things yeah. things start uh, picking up again. Yeah, Southport. I mean, we got relegated out of the cup, Southport, but it was it was good because I got forty games under my belt, um, and it was the manager was um, Paul Cook, you know, the Ipswich manager now. Oh, yeah. right. Um, he was the manager and I got on really well with him and, and I first met him at Akron standing out. I was only at Akron for a short time but at Akron we won the we actually won the the, well, the conference at the time it's the National League now and the talent in that team was phenomenal. I mean we just used to go on steamroller teams and he was the first team coach and he got the Southport job and he said look if you come I'll, I'll make you captain I'll make you top earner blah blah blah. I just wanted regular football that's all I wanted I just wanted regular football and I got it Um and I had a good year there. And then when I left there, um, Paul Cook, I'm sure, I'm, he got the sack. And then I had a year in Ireland in a place called Sligo. Yeah. And um, just such a, what a place Ireland is. But it's not a place to get your head down and work hard. You know what they're like. <laughs> if you're not in the boozer, you're in Paddy Power. So it's one of them where <laughs> it's, uh, I just had so much fun. But it done my football no favours. And then after that, Barrow come knocking, and that's when I really kicked on. So it was time to sort of do something, I think. Um, and I had to go down to Conference North for it. Um, I remember as plain as day, we lost my first game against Staley Bridge at home. I had to get a job because it was part time. I thought this maybe this is maybe the start of the real world, they call it, sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so the next 24 games, we didn't lose, and we ended up getting promoted. Um, and luckily enough, went back full time, and I just and as I say, the the times at Barrow, the it just clicked for me there. I played for two guys who I really, really got on with. They understood that what I could do, what I couldn't do, because what I could do, I was really good at, but what I couldn't do, I was really bad at. Like I couldn't run. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe the slowest player ever to play professional football. I'm, I'm better. I'm in the top three. <laughs> um, so, but. <laughs> Other sides of the game, they, they knew how to get the best out of me. And I appreciate that so much because I've had managers try to play me just in roles where you've got to be athletic. And I, I, listen, I, I'm the first to admit now, in, in the modern game now, 
I would I would I would get anywhere near a professional footballer because you have to be an athlete now. You have to be. There's no two ways about it. You've got to have the, you've got to be athletic. You've got to be fit. You've got to eat right. You've got to live right. You've just got to dedicate yourself to the game twenty four seven. Which when I played, you sort of it was getting that way, but it wasn't completely that way. Yeah. So. So yeah, but I had two managers, Dave Bayliss and, and Darren Sheridan, who just made me just sat me in the middle of the park with two runners next to me, and I just had five unbelievable years. I absolutely loved the club. The Wembley Cup final as well. <laughs> Wembley. What what was that like, mate? That must have been there. Uh, that must have been so. <laughs> well, do you know what? I was I was lucky enough to play at the old Wembley when I was ten for Ingle Junior School. Uh, me, Grant Holt, Paul Reed. Brett Swift. Um, that's some junior like, school team. That's <laughs> like, like we, uh, yeah. but honestly, we just, um, but, but we didn't realise it. We just like used to turn up and win and just think oh, it was normal. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. we ended up at Wembley. It was called the Smith Chris Six Aside. And um, we won the semi final 1 0. We won the final 2 0. So that was the old Wembley. And then obviously I was lucky enough to play the new Wembley. But what happened the week before um, the final, the FA Trophy final, was we played Wimbledon away for Barra. And I played and I scored and I played really well. I still wasn't confident I was going to play in the final. I know I never. Now, we got the best of hotels, five-star hotels we got to train at. Um, I think it was Watford's training ground, which was fantastic. The pitches were like carpets. And I had to snap out of my disappointment as quick as I could because I thought, I'm never going to get this experience again. So... I spat my dummy. I had a word with the, I had a word with the managers. He gave me some. He gave me what he gave me. I gave him. We shook hands and we moved on. And uh, so it got to it got to one one that full time. So it was extra time. And then I think I got about fifteen minutes as soon as Jason Walker scored the second. But before that, when you go and see it the day before and you walk out, you think, "What are they letting us on here for?" <laughs> you know what I mean it's just it's one of the best things in the world and we're all laughing and joking thinking this, this is just this is like you've never seen before and you know Barrow, I mean you'll know you, your dad will tell you Barrow fans go everywhere yeah. they go everywhere mate they're like they're, they're, I don't know they've got no concept of how far places are they just turn up and like they're there and you're like how have you not come this far but they love it <laughs> For that and then I mean we took we took eight and a half thousand to Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. We took similar to Sunderland. I don't know how many we took to Wembley, but when that second goal went in and the final whistle went, don't ask me about the next two or three days because I can't say <laughs> <tell you. laughs> it was a hell of a game. It was, it was. I, I it was uh, there was all action on it. I mean there was bloodshed, there was sending offs, there was yeah. They went ahead. But you know what? They disrespected us massively, you know, Steve Bridge, it, it's Graham Wesley, and I think if you you will probably know. I don't think he's got the greatest reputation as a manager, Graham West. Yeah. They turned up with like they were in shorts and t-shirt and flip-flops and sunglasses. And you thought, you know what, these not just think they're gonna turn up and beat us here. We were suited and booted. Obviously, it was a it was the the day of our lives. We, we it was one of the biggest games we'll ever play in, or the, the biggest. And they just turned, obviously they went one nil up, they were massive favourites. And but once we got back into it, we more than held our own. And in the end, I think we deserved to win. Um it was a lad called Lee McEverly. Yes. Uh, remember him? Proper I mean, he, 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 bald potato. He, he couldn't look any less like in football if he tried. Could he? <laughs> <laughs> what a mess of a man! But honestly, what a big unit up front. And he was he was brilliant, and he had so much ability. But he, he's he's just carrying a bit. But he scored the, I think he scored the equaliser, didn't he? And then yeah. um, then Jason obviously was the local lad there, wasn't it? I mean, what a finish! And that's something that he'll never forget. And I, I was Jason's roommate. And, I've, I've got so much time for you, so I was delighted for him. And it was, it was great. I mean, I got to give him a medal <coughs> straight to my my dad um, as we were going around the pitch doing the the lap of honour, which was which 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 was a bit emotional for me because it was sort of I could see in his face he was he was absolutely over the moon. And after all them years of trying to to help me and, and always be there for me, and I could give him something back. And he was proud as punch, and I got to give him a medal around the pitch. So that was that was probably my the greatest greatest couple of minutes that I've I've probably had on a football pitch was was giving my dad my, my medal on, on Wembley. Ah, lovely stuff. Um so from Barrow then the uh, oh, working with working, yeah, working with the lads, I um <laughs> lads from back home. I mean we, we had some real good lads, I mean we had some good bus journeys home and I think that was because every away game was miles away. <laughs> So yeah, it was like myself, David Hewson, Aaron Taylor, Gary Roundtree, just 
just really, really good, good players from Cumbria, like top, top players from from the area. Um, and we were we were a bit of a unfancied, unfashionable team, but Dan Edmondson just knew how to how to get us playing. Uh, we had a lad called Johnny Wright up front, who's a centre forward now. He should have played a lot higher. He's one of the best. I said this a while ago when I was talking to someone. People were like, really? I was like, he's one of the best centre forwards I've ever played with, but he only played around the Conference North, Conference South area. But what a player! And um, yeah, we had a we had, had a real good two years there, and then I went money grabbing again, didn't I? So <laughs> oh, I was quite looking forward to this popping up because uh, we all went to a couple of games at the time just for something to do, and we had like a spare afternoon and that like Celtic Nation. What was going on there? Honestly, man, what a place that was! Jesus, I mean, it was just it was a circus from. Week to week, anything could happen and it wouldn't shock you. Anything no, no, you'd get. I mean, in the end, they ended up getting like Peter Murphy signed, um, John Paul McGiven, who was at Carl Alpin for Chef Wedding, like the championship. He yeah. came and signed because I can't imagine how much money they give him. Colin McMenon in from up Scotland, Willie Gibson. And it, do you know what? It was a really, really good change room, um, but it was just full of eagles. <laughs> um, I mean, but we didn't. We we should have. We should have walked the league, but we never. We come second. Spenny move won the league, and we yeah. we uh, we came second. Then the wheels fell off because the owner was like, "Look, we have to go up unless it's going to be all over." But he used to see changes in managers. He used to see the chairman play up front. He used to play. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you just got on with it because you thought, you know what? This is what I've signed up to. This is what I've got to get on with. But it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal little club, and you know what? I had a really, really good time there. But when, when the wheels fell off and the money dried up, I was actually I was actually player manager the year after. Um, we sort of had enough money left to get through that season, and I really enjoyed it because I got the I got the best local lads from from the town to come and to come and have a go in a in a league that they probably never get the chance to play in. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like in the northern people don't don't underestimate the northern league. It's such a good standard of player, and I got the best lads from around Carlos. Come and test yourself. Listen, we used to get beat six to seven sometimes. We did. Of some really good team, but we 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 had, we nearly stayed up. I mean, we never. But for the for the team and the lads we had in that northern league, we give it a right good shot. We did, and I was I was I was really proud of them because they came out of the comfort zone and and, and they come from like the alliance where they were sort of like big fish in a little pond, and, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and test myself in the northern league, and and I'll always respect them all for doing that. Quality. I remember I remember going to a game for Celtic Nation, and Nathan Luscombe was playing. Was... Jesus, what a player! <laughs> I, Honestly, uh, I saw his debut for Sunderland and Celtic Nation. I must be the only person in the world that can say that. <laughs> you, say that. <laughs> you know what, right? Like, you see that kid, Nathan Luscombe. He is up there with the funniest lads I've ever met in my life. But see, talented. Honestly, if he applied himself, he would have been a top top player. But he just didn't care. He didn't care. All he wanted to do was have a laugh with the lads, have a gamble, have a drink on a weekend. He'd be checking. He'd be checking his coupon and how the horses are doing in the toilet at half time of games and things like that. Like <laughs> that was a lot more important to him than listening to what the manager got to say. Do you know what I mean? But he was a, he was a, he was a character. Some player though. Some player. Oh no, class. Um, right. Um, after Celtic Nation, then did you? Like the, I've just got your list of your clubs here: Penrith and Carlisle City. Was there? I had listen. I helped out a couple of times. I was about it. My legs ah, were gone. Thirty-five. I was done. I was done <laughs> and dusted. I mean, I, I, do you know what? I, I, I'm. Um, I was still. I, I played about two or three games for Penrith. Wasn't up to it anymore. It's the hardest thing to accept in the world when your legs have gone because. You never think it's going to happen to you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and when the time comes, it hits you. It just It's so it's plain as day to you. You know it's time. You can get as fit as you want, but when your legs have gone, your legs have gone. It's time to step back and, and let the younger lads do it. Um, but look, when I look back, I was... Yeah, I've got regrets. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not, but I've had some good times, you know, some really good times. So I'm, uh, I feel I'm very lucky to be, to be able to say I was a professional footballer because... You see how many kids get rejected. You see how many lads have been released. This summer, I think it's a record. Obviously, because of the pandemic and things, it must yeah. be a record. And there's lads out of jobs, mate, and they won't know where to turn. And it's it's tough on them. And I wouldn't, I really wouldn't swap positions with them because I've been there. And it's 
it's a it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, but you've got to get up and you've got to get on, and you and you find life after football. Fair enough, mate. Um, so obviously you've got the commentary for Barrow, like we touched on before. So you'll be excited for carrying on that on for next season <coughs> as well, then, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I was lucky to to get that um, because James Phillips used to commentate on Barrow when I was there. And I just bumped into him one time. He says, oh, you still working? Or something ish, whatever. And I says, no, I packed in. He went, do you know what? I might have something for you. He went, how do you fancy doing uh, some Carlisle games when Mummy can't do them and doing the away games for Barra? I said, do you know what? I'll, I'll have a go of it. So my, my first game was Carlisle's first game of the season away at Mansfield. And I wasn't bothered. I was sat there. I, I, it was brand new to me. And the headphones on and the, the little microphone and what have you done. We had like a little talk before the game and then five to three come and the team comes out. The nerves just kicked in. I was like, I don't know if I can do this, you know. Like, I don't want to sound like a like, idiot on here, but you just, I suppose, like, like anything, if you, if you give it a go and, and they, they point you in the right direction when you're maybe doing something a little bit wrong or what have you. And now I've been doing it quite a while and I do really enjoy it. And, and, and as you say, I, I was desperate for Barrow not to go down back on the National League. It's a good stand, don't get me wrong, but... There's nothing like being in the in the EFL, so I just hope they can build on it now and and uh, they can they can push up the league next season because there's one thing for sure once they let them fans back in, they'll be packed that place and it's a it's it's a really good place to play when it's packed. Ah, oh, class, right? I think uh, Dill you still there, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, it's my camera's gone. All <laughs> right, <laughs> um, D- Dylan's got like five quick questions for you, pal. Before we let you get let you get off. Fire away. Let's go on then, Dill. Quick fire, not, not daft. Um, right. <laughs> Best player you played with? Best player I've played with. <sighs> Do you know what? I've I, I have played in games with with really well known well known players like uh, the, the, uh, Newcastle in the reserves and people come back from from fitness. But I would have to say, as, as part of the first team, I would have to say Stephen McPhee um, for Port Vale, the centre forward. Right. Uh, toughest opponent then? Gary McAllister. Oof. He was play oh, wow. he was player manager for Coventry. I like it. Oh yeah. And it was awful. It was really <laughs> awful. I just honestly all I could see was the bottom of his boots every time I went anywhere near us. But <laughs> he was 38, 39 years old and I was like just 23, 22 and he was phenomenal, mate, honestly. Just 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 so clever in the middle of the park. He just made it look so easy. He always sticks out in my mind. Jason Kumas is a close second mind. <laughs> uh, Favourite manager you played under? Um, it's got to be Dave Bayliss and Dan Sheridan at Barra. Yeah. Right, uh, Favourite game you played in? Played in. <sighs> for atmosphere-wise and, and for, the, for the, the club that it was, we played Sheffield Wednesday and Boxing Day years ago for Port Vale. We beat them 3 2 in the last minute, and it was full um, at Hillsborough. Um, and it just gave you goosebumps walking out. And I just, when that goal went in in the last minute, it just took that sticks out in my mind. Obviously, Wembley and things like that were amazing. But as far as that, uh, yeah, just uh, Port Vale at Hillsborough years ago on a, on a Boxing Day. And then finally, mate, favourite goal you've scored? <laughs> um, I think it'll it's I scored for Southport against Burton Albion. Um now they were top, we were near the bottom. We couldn't we got in their half about three times and it's one of them where I've tried to hit it from 40, 45 yards and I've just connected with it and it's flew in the top corner. I would never I could never do it again. But <laughs> it, it's flew in the top corner and I I just I mean obviously I've got the I mean not people have them now, I've still got the DVD, but it's uh yeah, it's um that's, it'll have to be Southport uh, away to Burton I'll be just, just went in like a rocker and I'll, I'll never forget that one oh, it's a real strike that to be fair pal <laughs> 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 well, anyway, that's me done then I'll, I'll pass back to Jay uh, right then Ben thanks very much for giving us uh, an hour of your time and no it was a pleasure lads it was lovely really to speak to you that. Really, really was alright lads spot on mark right. take care matey take care Thank you. speak to you soon all the best see you lads all right. bye bye bye, bye. So, there it is, lads. Another interview comes to an end. Another good one, though. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Thank you again to Mark for coming on. Really appreciate it. Uh, and shall I again thank our sponsors, uh, the Apple Tree Pub in Carlisle. 
uh, T Southern Clothing, and we'll give a shout out to the FM Retro Group as well. Um, so hopefully we'll get more lined up for you, and we'll see you again from the Prawn Sandwich Podcast. Yeah. Cheers, lads. Take care, everyone. Bye. Up the hammers. <laughs> <laughs> How's the bacon, did you say? It's Sancho. Aguero.